Okay, I couldn't help myself. I had to make one more movie. All right, um, I'll show you what I did. Um, let's see here. File, open. All right, this is what I did. There's the animation, right? But I decided to add another piece. First of all, I made the bubbles have a black outline, and then I made them kind of like pop. I wanted to make the bubbles pop. Now you can't see it that well unless you drag open the animation because most of them are popping off screen, which is unfortunate, but you can see it a little bit. So if you look here, and as the fish comes around, you can see them like a little bit right there, right there, and I could make them more visible later. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And so I've got this example here. And so one thing that I did was is I, I got out my animation. I said, Let, how can I make this better? So I went to, let's see here, Window, Library. And I opened up the fish. And I get my selection tool here. And I'm going to zoom in. All right. And the first thing I did was I double clicked on the bubble to go into the bubble animation. All right. And then what I did was I double clicked again on the bubble so I could go into the graphic. So now I'm inside of scene one. I'm in the fish animation movie clip. I'm inside the bubble animation movie clip. And now I've double clicked and now I'm inside the bubble graphic. So see how this is really important, the idea of nesting, right? Inside of scene one, which is itself a movie clip, really, right? It has a timeline. Then I've got the fish movie clip. And inside the fish movie clip is the bubble animation. Okay, and the bubble animation was created with a little bubble graphic that tweens. So now I'm like inside, 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 and now now I'm all the way down to the root. And at the root, the um, the it's just a shape. It's just the shape, a circle, with a, a fill, a white fill, and a stroke. And what I did was is I selected that stroke and I changed it from gray, from a gray color, to black and I liked it a lot better. So I like that a lot better. That's one thing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my animation. Okay. There's the animation. I'll go to the last frame. And the bubble ends here, but in, in reality, maybe the bubble would pop, right? So if I, I want the bubble to pop, how would I do that? Well, this is what I did. I decided to create another layer. I created layer two, right? See how I can create multiple layers. We know that. Drag it to the trash can. I got layer two here, and I created a keyframe. I'm going to create a keyframe right afterwards. So F6. So the animation plays, and then I have a keyframe, right? And what I need to do is, is I need to draw the popping sequence keyframe by keyframe, hand, you know, almost by hand. I'm going to make the animation happen. So to do that, I'm going to turn on onion skinning, which is this little button right here, so I can see my previous frames. And now when you turn on onion skinning the first time, it might just look like that. So I'm on frame 26, but I can see 24 and 23. I can drag this open to see my previous frames. So that lets me know where I want to draw. And I got my line tool here, this little line tool. And what I did was is I just drew a couple lines like this. All right. All right like that. All right, some lines. And I can grab my pointer tool and I can make them smaller or bigger. I could move them with the keys on the keyboard. I could just, you know, kind of move them around a little bit. So there we are. We have those, right? And then I'm going to go to the next frame and insert a blank keyframe. And then I will draw them again but I'm going to draw them this time just a little bit bigger. Kind of like moving outward. Might even add a second one here. All right. Okay, there we go. And then I will insert another blank key. Right click on the keyframe insert blank keyframe, left click, and draw it again. And so now the animation is traveling outwards. Okay. All 
right? Now on this next one, instead of um, inserting a blank keyframe, I'm going to right click and insert a regular keyframe, right? And then this time I've got all the little lines selected. I can just get my transform tool and possibly just kind of enlarge it as a quick and easy way of making the animation kind of spread out some more. Right? Okay. And so now I can play this and see how it works. I could turn off onion skinning when I play it. To play it, I'm just hitting enter on the keyboard. There goes the bubble and then the pop. Okay. Um, if I want to add one more, I could say F6 and then take each one of these pieces and make them smaller, like they're getting smaller from the back end somehow. And if I wanted to, I could even move them using, select each one and move them using the keys on the keyboard to kind of what we call nudge the graphics. Right? At the end of my animation, I might enter a blank keyframe, right click, insert blank keyframe, and now test it out. Hit control enter and look at your animation. And I'm only seeing one bubble explode. And the reason that is, is that I'm not seeing the other bubbles explode, is that this whole animation from beginning to end is 1 to frame 31. But if we look at our fish movie clip, I'm going to click on this fish movie clip right here. Okay, I just clicked on the fish movie clip. This last bubble only has 17 to 30 to exist. So it needs to go from 17, let's say, or 18, frame 18. Uh, this is 18 right here. It needs 31 frames, so it really needs to go to like frame 40 or 39. So this last one really needs to go out to here. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go out to, let's say, 40 here, highlight the whole row, and hit F5. And now if I hit Control enter these bubbles will exist on the stage long enough so that they can all pop. Right? And that is pretty cool. And then the last but not least, if I wanted to, I could take each bubble. I'm going to zoom out so we can see them. There they are. Each bubble and nudge it down a little bit. One, two, three. So that try to get them on stage more. So that the animation ends up going a little bit lower. So I'm nudging with the keyboard, moving each of these little bubbles down so they start lower on the screen, so I have maybe have a better chance of seeing them animate. So we can't see them too much. We want to see them pop, though. And if we start the animation a little bit lower, then we'll have more chance to see them pop. So once again, I'll just do that, nudge it down a little bit more. One, two. One, two three, using the keyboard arrows to nudge them down, selecting each one, and then nudging them down with the down arrow on my keyboard. And now, I think the animation is nice, so it's got a motion tween for the bubbles, but it's also got a little keyframing hand drawing making the bubbles explode. And I think that's pretty nice.